So hello and welcome to another week's Worship at Home. I hope that you've had a good week and that you're still coping. Please, if you're finding it difficult or if there's practical help you need, do get in touch with me and I'll see what we can do through the church or through our partners in the community. It's been a stormy week and so I'm recording this hoping that the rain doesn't come. It's threatening another thunderstorm. But I know that people have said they do prefer these when I'm outside. And I've also chosen to sit in a different part of the garden today. Um, this rose is called Rambling Rector. And it's a plant that my mum and dad gave to Roger when he became rector of the parish here in Ashton. So it seemed a very appropriate place to sit with its kind of church theme. And it smells beautiful as well. So it's a lovely place to sit. So today we're going to be thinking about making choices. Our gospel reading talks of Jesus telling his disciples about the difficult choices that they will have to make if they're to follow him. And we too have difficult choices to make, particularly perhaps at this time. So let's now have our collect. Faithful creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so now we're going to have a reading from the Bible and that will be followed then by our gospel reading. First reading, Jeremiah 27 to 13. Jeremiah cried out, O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a, la a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout. Violence and destruction for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in and I cannot. For I hear many whisperings. Terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonour will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you're te you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become unknown. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. 
rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever ever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's now three months since we went into lockdown. To start with, it was very straightforward to know what to do. We were told to stay at home, to protect the NHS and save lives. That was it, it was clear. You stayed at home unless you were going out for very particular reasons. We just had to remember very few things. There wasn't much of a choice to make. It was stay at home or go out if you're able to. Now the rules have changed and the latest government slogan is stay alert. That's a much harder choice to make. How do we know what staying alert actually means? We've had to start to interpret the rules as relaxations to lockdown start to be applied. What category of person do I fall into? Am I vulnerable? Am I very vulnerable? What kind of activities am I doing? What kind of shops am I going to? Are they allowed to be open or not? We're starting to have the decisions being made about how far apart we must be. Choices that become our choice to make and much harder. And they can be down to our interpretation. And of course, it's easier for some people to choose to disobey the rules and that's the nature I think of the way life with the virus will be is that the choices we make become harder to make. Since the announcement that churches could reopen there's been lots of guidance coming through from the government and from the national church often different advice appearing day after day and as soon as you've got your head around one way of doing things you receive the news that actually it has to be done differently. As each church is different, we've got to work out how the rules apply to us in our particular situation. So at St Martin's, how will they work for us there? With St Andrew's at Church of the Epiphany, how will they work for us there? Bearing in mind that we've also got the preschool, which is going to be opening shortly. We have the Methodist congregation, which also needs to be able to share a building with us. And so you might find that as things progress, the choices that St Martin's and St Andrew's make have to be different. When you return, you'll find that things look and feel different. Whether it's returning for private prayer or in time services, they won't be the way that they were before. We've had to think of the consequences of our choices and the risks that we're prepared to accept. And so the wardens and I and some other people have started to think about risk assessments in our churches. And we've had to make lots of choices to decide what's the safest choice to make. Some of our choices may not be popular, but they're what we have to do because they're what the government says. We have to prioritise what's more important. So you will find that things are different about the way that you leave church and arrive at church, where you can sit, what you can do, where you can have conversations, which at the moment will probably be conversations will have to be outside, so let's pray for good weather. It's all going to require 
a good deal of compromise from each other as we try to find a way of re-establishing our worship of our loving God. But that's nothing new. Life is full of choices, isn't it? About what things we buy, how we spend our money, how healthy our lifestyle is going to be, who we spend our time with. And with all choices, there are consequences. And we have to normally decide which is going to have good consequences, not so good consequences, or quite bad consequences. And hopefully normally we go for the good or the nearly good consequences. But sometimes I guess we make choices about maybe how much chocolate we're going to eat, or um, in our case, how many cakes we're going to bake and eat in our house, that we know we still do, even though we know actually the outcome is not great. Too many cakes means the scales put on weight, or rather they put weight onto me. It's also not always easy to make choices because of peer pressure or because we're misled. After all, how many adverts truly tell us the negative impact of what they're trying to get us to choose to buy or do? Our faith is also a choice. We have to make a choice when we're going to be followers of Jesus. And Jesus in our gospel re reading spelled out the realities, the challenging realities of being his disciple. And some would be good and some is not such good news. The good news is that we are highly valued by God and God knows every detail of our lives. So Jesus said we need never be afraid because God loves us and will always be with us and protect us. On the other hand, the not so good news, Jesus says, is that it's not always easy to be a disciple. And obviously in some parts of the world this is very much the case. We see Christians and indeed people of all faiths being persecuted for their beliefs. Here we may face ridicule when we say we're a Christian or a polite smile or be ignored. And at times we might have to be quite brave about the decisions that we make that are required of us from our faith because they set us at odds with our friends or our families. The decisions that we make about the things we do, how we spend our money, things we value as being important can be very different to other people and we need to decide what's more important. But Jesus says to his disciples this is the way it's going to be and he doesn't offer any of us a life without problems. What he does do is promise to help us through those problems when they happen. We're not immune as Christians from the problems that other people face. And we've seen in the coronavirus, isn't it, that it's no judge of who you are or what your faith is. We are all susceptible to it. We're all affected equally by it. So there will be challenges created by living out our faith, but Jesus says, be realistic and be prepared for these up front. Face difficulties with a resilience that comes from an assurance of our value in the sight of God. And throughout the Bible, we have the promise that we are valued and loved by God and that he will never abandon us. We read of so many people who speak out bravely in the face of oppression. For example, in our first reading today, the prophet Jeremiah continues to speak his message from God despite extensive opposition and risk to himself. But he keeps on going because he has committed his cause to God. He keeps on trusting God to protect him. And so as he says, he can still sing praises to God because he trusts in God, whatever the difficulties. Likewise in our psalm, we have someone there who faced alienation from his nearest and dearest. And yet he continues to rely on the steadfast love of God. And this is the confidence that Jesus calls us to. Cling to our faith, whatever challenges we have. Cling on to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Cling on to the hope we have that God's steadfast love is always true 
for each one of us and that God is walking alongside us each day of our lives. So we need to remember that in all that we face each day, that we are equipped by God, we are encouraged by God, so that we can come safely through whatever we face, whatever the consequences of the choice that we make, or indeed of choices that are made for us. So hang on to your faith and believe with confidence that God is always with you, always values you, is always there protecting and keeping you safe. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for those in leadership looking to ease lockdown, that they would act with wisdom. The decisions made are about keeping us safe and healthy and well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for schools working out how to enable more children to return to school. For those who are teaching at this time, as they settle to a new way of teaching and working together in schools to keep children and all staff safe and able to learn in the best way possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healthcare workers who are exhausted from months of working in difficult circumstances. Be their strength at this time as they care for so many people in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all churches working out how to reopen their buildings for wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray that you would keep all people of faith safe 
as they practice their religion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, suffering in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember those who have died, especially remembering George Jakes and Stephanie Quinn. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for ourselves, particularly if we've got decisions that we need to make this week, that you would help us to make wise choices, choices that are about following you and living in your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now we come to the end of our time together this week. So this week, walk with confidence through whatever challenges you face, knowing that you have a loving, faithful God to protect you and to take care of you, to keep you safe, to guide you and help you in all the choices that you make. Pray for us in the leadership of churches as we make those choices about how we can safely return to church. Pray for our government, for our national church, as they too make decisions that affect all of our lives, choices that we all will have to abide by. So pray for those this week who are making choices. And now we have our blessing. May God give you his strength, his power and endurance so that you too can take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.